Welcome back to another video. So this is my venture into the world of HD video FPV. Run through in a previous video, uh, just a bit of an unboxing of the HD goggles there that I've uh, got. Had them for a few months now, but I haven't had the VTX and camera set up with it. So I've just purchased this Avatar HD Pro kit uh, from Walk Snail. It's just arrived. So the plan is to fit it to one of my craft, probably the um, FX61 and just give it a bit of a test and see what we've got here. So a little bit of a feature run through here. We'll open up the box in a minute. So features 1080p, 120 frames per second compatibility. Uh, has built in 32 gigabyte storage, uh, 22 milliseconds low latency, claiming it has up to four kilometer range with the stock antennas. So I'm gonna look at upgrading that side of things too. I think we will and uh, try and get most out of the kit because the current setup I've got in the I plan to put it in is a 1.3 gigahertz system and it's flying pretty good at the moment with decent range. A bit reluctant to sort of sacrifice that, but I mean it's HD footage so times are changing, this is where we're going. So the camera also has a good field of view of 160 degrees, it also supports 6 to 25 volts of power. Built-in storage makes it quite good so you don't need an SD card. And I believe this is both compatible with the Avatar goggles and the version one Hawk Snail goggles. So the HD Pro camera is compatible at 1080p, 120 frames per second, as we said. Also, you can do 60 frames per second at the same resolution. You can also probably to save storage too. If you want to go down to 720, you can do that at 120 frames per second and 60 frames per second. Has an image sensor of 1 1 8 inch Sony Starvis 2 sensor with a 160 degree field of view. The Avatar V2 VTX has 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, mounting hole so you can mount it above other stacks if that's the way of doing it. I won't be doing it that way. It records 1080p and 720p and has eight channels and an inbuilt storage of 32 gigabytes. All up it weighs 17.6 grams. So let's open up the box here and see what we've got. Included in the box should be your, your camera, your VTX antenna, and all your cable set up uh, and screws. So let's just take a bit of a look here. So everything comes packaged neatly in a nice little foam protection. You have the aerial video transmitter and camera there with your wires in a little bag with screws up the very top there. So that's everything you get in the box there. This here looks like a USB transfer extension cable, I'd say for upgrading or updating the firmware, my guess is. And here, another cable here probably connects into the VTX and wires up to your flight controller. So that's it. So I'm going to uh, start wiring this up and pulling out the 1.3 gigahertz system in the FX61. So let's get on with the install of the Avatar HD Pro kit. So uh, two cables, one will plug in the back here. And this is the one that goes to your flight controller. You got your four wires there, so you got your power ground, video, transmit and receiver. Pretty much standard, I'm assuming that transmitter goes to the receiver on the flight controller and the RX goes to the TX. So what I might do is just have a look at the Speedy B F405 wing, that's the flight controller in the FX61. And we'll just see how that recommends the HD setup to be wired up in that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's just a plug. So I should be able to just solder on the plug to this end of this cable here and mount it. And it should be all good to go. So we'll start pulling out all the wiring in the fuselage. i to get all this, I want to keep some of this because it could still be handy for another project along the way if I choose to go analog again, I don't know. All right, so that's the old system out of the car. That's a 1.3 gigahertz system. This was a pretty good budget system. If you're looking to get into the 1.3, this is a part-on receiver I got off Banggood. I've had it in the, in the plane for probably six years. And it's, it's it's taken me out some pretty good distances just on the stock antenna here. I've had it out to 10 kilometers in, in distance before with the receiver having a an upgraded antenna on the ground station, but this is the stock antenna for the transmitter. And it was running a really old 
run cam eagle, which also never failed it's quite well. With your layout here of your board, you've got analog camera on the left side here. Next to it, you've got the analog VTX. That's how I just had this set up uh, and pulled out. So then I've got my GPS next to it. So the digital VTX is now going to have to go on the opposite side. All right, so the cable I'm gonna use is this six, six pin cable. Probably only gonna use the four wires here. HD VTX is plugged in, you've got your red, your black, then you should have a white and then a grey. So they'll be your four that you need. We're just going to be going colour to colour, it's a very simple setup. So to get the antenna on, that's what you've got to do. You've got to take off the, the little plate here, push it on. I'm not sure why they did it that way, but I guess the plate is also going to hold the antenna securely on. It's not going to pop off, which is a good thing. Okay, so that's the antenna install, so it can't come up. There's a little bit of movement left and right, but it can't come out. That's a good idea. So that's my cable all done. We've, um, I didn't bother with these. I might just tuck them away at this stage. I won't cut them off or get rid of them because I may need them. But at this stage, I just want to set it up. So I've got the red to red, white to white, gray to gray and black to black. I'm not too sure whether my RX and TX are crossed. They're meant to be RX to TX, TX to RX. Find that out once I plug it up, it'll either work or it won't, I guess. And if it doesn't work, it's just a matter of, of just swapping it over in the plug here, which is not a big deal. All right, so I've got to connect it up here now. So she's plugged in. Let me have a bit of a look here. I've got it plugged into the back here, very back corner here where the DJI port is. And I'm gonna mount it just here like this and my camera's going to go here excuse all the tape guys it's pretty messy but that's how it is it's an old plane this one and when she's old she still runs vtx is going in there aerial will just pop up somewhere in here like that so next i want to install the latest firmware from the cadex fpv site i'm on the on the cadex fpv web page here the download uh, page firmware avatar so I've downloaded the latest firmware on the goggles not the beta I've got the stable version 37.242.3 uh, avatar system update procedure avatar system firmware update record we'll check out this one okay avatar goggles update procedure this is the goggles so that's I'm not going to worry about I've done that uh, avatar H D transmitter update procedure important ensure to use a fully charged battery to power the avatar kit during an update loss of power during the 10 minute update may result in a brick system we download the avatar sky image to a computer connect your transmitter to your computer using usb cable that was included with the transmitter supply power to the video transmitter if the transmitter is wired to the drone simply power up the drone with the props off for safety. The transmitter storage should appear on the computer as an external storage device. Put the avatar sky image onto the transmitter storage. Disconnect the transmitter from your computer. The LED on the transmitter should begin blinking green. Push and hold the link button on the back of the transmitter for eight seconds. The LED on the transmitter will turn off indicating the start of the update process. During the update the LED on the transmitter will blink red. When the update is complete, the LED will blink green. Now it's probably fairly important as well to make sure both your goggles and the transmitter are on the same firmware. You're not gonna have one on one firmware, one on the other, cause that's just asking for issues. It is, so keep them on the same firmware. Okay, so to download the latest firmware, we, we click on the latest firmware that's available. Now, I've downloaded the Avatar 
4.2.3 stable version that's on my goggles keep them the same obviously this is what is current at the time of recording of this video so download the same firmware that's on your goggles so I'll click download download anyway it's 191 megabytes it's a pretty big file all right so here it is 37.43 if we click that there's all your firmwares here so avatar x would be for the goggles and avatar sky for the transmitter so that's going to have to go onto the little hard drive so let's go grab the vtx so cables disconnected uh, units blinking green at the moment you may need to plug the battery into the plane to give the vtx power before plugging it into the computer and it should open up a page and it does and that's what we put our firmware onto let's copy and paste our firmware across so the avatar sky 37.42.3 we've, we've uh, put our firmware on the vtx the led on the transmitter should be blinking green and that's what it is Push and hold the link button on the back of the transmitter for eight seconds. The LED on the transmitter will turn off, indicating the start of the update process. During the update, the LED on the transmitter will blink red. When it's complete, the LED will blink green again. Okay, so eight seconds we need to hold the bind button in. So, need to find the bind button. It's a bit dark here. Sorry, guys, and it's hot too. Wow, geez, they do heat up. So, how long is this going to be? What we might do, guys, is take this out to a more ventilated area. I'm telling you, that heats up pretty quick. Cooled down pretty quick, though, but it was heating up pretty quick. So, yeah, try and keep that in mind. That's why you need to have it in a, in a nice ventilated spot in the plane. I'm going to make a... I've got a few holes here anyway, so it should be pretty... keep pretty cool there. All right, let's plug it in and hit the bind button for eight seconds and see what happens. It's flashing green which is what we want. Let's hold it down for eight seconds. And that's turned off, like it said. The red light's blinking now. So we let the red light blink and we leave it in that state now until it's turned back to green again. Hopefully it doesn't take long. I'm under a fan here, so it's gonna keep it a bit cooler, but I'll come back once it's done and let you know how long it took. So that literally only took about 30 seconds. Not long after I turned the camera off, it went green. So it's flashing green now, so I'm assuming we're all good. How hot is it at this stage? It's not hot at the moment, but it's warming up. You can feel it. So you don't want to be sitting there without any airflow on it for too long, or you'll, you may burn it out. So the next thing I'm wondering is whether we've got HD footage in our goggles. Let's check it out. Um, I've also... Kadak sent the, a new... I sent the new heatsink they did, that's for the old heatsink that was on it, I've pulled it off. And they sent the new heatsink which I've installed in there some time back. Uh, yeah, that, that's free, so they also sent this audio, uh, this cable, audio cable, five port audio cable for the analog FPV, which I still can't get going, but oh well, not too worried about that. We're still going to bind the receiver to the transmitter. So the binding process. Binding is the process of linking the FPV goggles with the VTX. It must be completed for video to be received. Multiple transmitters can be bonded to the same set of goggles. Follow these steps. Number one, power on the goggles. Wait for the goggles to display the main standby screen, which they are. Power on the VTX. Wait for the VTX to blink green. It's what it's doing. Press the link button on the VTX. LED will turn red. Use a tool to press the link button on the goggles and wear the goggles. When the binding is complete, the goggles will stop beeping and the LED on the VTX will turn green. Okay, let's give that a go. All right, let's plug in. We need to wait for the VTX to turn green. And then we hit the bind button. We don't hold it for eight seconds, we just hit it. There we go, we got red there now. Okay. Now we've got to use a tool to press the link button on the goggles. So I've just got an Allen key here, I'm just going to use this. Oh, 
I think we've got it. Let's just stick my head in there so I can have a look. We're bound guys, that's good. So that's how it's done. I can't really show you anything else in there, I don't think, other than what's there. So we'll come back a bit later, so we're bound up. VTX over here is green, yes, so that's changed, that's what it's meant to do, it's solid green. And it's not overly hot at the moment. Okay, let's go to the next step. All right, so we're back at the computer. Let's um, have a look. So we said before, UART5 is our digital VTX and analog VTX on the Speedy BF405 wing. So what we need to do now is go into iNav. Okay, here we are in iNav. Let's just connect up. So what we need to do now is go into our ports tab. We go to UART5 and let's go over under the peripherals here. We open the drop box down and select DJI FPV VTX. I believe it's the only one I can think of. And we'll save and reboot. Sorry guys, that, was, that wasn't entirely correct. So I've ended up changing it on my peripherals in my UART5. I haven't got the DJI selected now. It's supposed to be MSP display port. It uh, gives you more options, it does for your OSD, so select that instead of DJI. So MSP Display Port actually opens up a few more options for you anyway, so it's, it's a better option to have. Both still seem to work fine, but there's just more options with the MSP Display Port, so select that instead of DJI in your Ports tab. So, back in the garage again. So that's successfully working, now we just got to mount the system we're going to mount the VTX there and then tidy up the cables and then we're basically done. Let's um, fix this into the plane. So we're all done. I've glued up. Got the camera mounted just in the nose there. Transmitter mounted up here. Aerial poking up here. I wasn't sure whether that should be underneath. I may change that. We'll just see what the range is like. I've got my hook up for the PC there. And I'm just going to boot it up now and just, just make sure everything's happy. So there's a picture there that looks very nice actually. Quite nice. Some minor adjustments to be needed. One thing you could probably do is mount a fan on top of the VTX might help, but it's, it is going to draw more power. Got my OSD set up in iNav. I didn't bother showing you what I had to do there, but if there's any questions, try and ask me and I'll try and help. But that's basically everything sorted out. I'm not going to leave it on too long here because we will overheat otherwise. So I hope you find this video useful. Uh, full run through there and setup of the Walk Snail Avatar HD Pro kit and have avatar goggles. Any questions just let me know. Stay safe guys, enjoy the hobby. It can be done indoors and outdoors. See you next video guys. Bye for now.